Hey guys, I'm Tim with Bleepin' Jeep. Over the past week, Project Green Machine has received all sorts of modifications and new additions to the vehicle. A custom front winch bumper, worn Xeon 8S, longer shackles in the rear, hydro assist steering, and a front locker. With all these new modifications and additions added to the Jeep, unproven with zero miles on them, we left the shop and took this Jeep straight to the Rubicon where we wheeled the trail in its entirety. The locker held up great and made a difficult trail manageable to do with 33 inch tires. In today's video, we'll be showing you how simple it is to install this American made locker. Today I'm down here at Rock and Road Performance and we are making a few modifications to Project Green Machine before an upcoming trail ride we have. In today's video, I'll be adding a torque locker to the front differential in my Dana 44. This is a box that the locker comes in, it's not very big. Aussie and Torque Logger are the only two mechanical lockers made in the USA, and in my book that goes a long way. One thing that jumps out at us right away is how few parts there are in this design. And that can definitely be a good thing. The Torque Locker uses a slide-in keyway design that eliminates the pins used in other lockers. This is one feature that makes the Torque Locker one of the strongest auto locking designs on the market. The axles in my Jeep are out of a 1970s Ford pickup, so depending on what axles you're running, the disassembly will be a little bit different. But basically you need to take apart the hubs or spindles or whatever your setup is so you're ready to pull the axle shafts. And once you're at that point, the next step will obviously be to remove the differential cover and drain the fluid out. After you have the diff cover off, one of the next steps is going to be to remove the cross pin from the, the middle section here. And in this case, on this Dana 44, the, uh, the pin is not going to clear the ring gear. Let me rotate this so you can see. So this is the pin uh, right here, and that pin needs to slide all the way out so we can pull the, the gears out. And uh, in my case, we're going to have to actually unbolt the ring gear, and we'll, we'll do all this on the bench. Um, there's another differential on the table here that I'll show you where this is not the case. So this is the front differential from the Chevy 10 bolt. And this is the pin, the retaining bolt right here that holds the pin in. That whole pin needs to slide out, but as you can see, this would clear the ring gear no problem. So you'd be able to do all this without taking any of this out. Instead of a bolt on this carrier, it uses a roll pin in that hole that goes through the pin and all the way out that side. So now with the ring gear out of the way, we'll use a punch to drive out that roll pin, allowing the pin to come out. With the pin out of the way, your spider gears will basically just fall right out. They'll either drop out of the bottom or you can rotate the side gears and pull the spiders out of the top. And now the side gears should just come right out of here with a little persuasion. Then we'll need to keep track of the thrush washers for proper spacing that are pressed onto the back here. So for now, just keep track of driver's side and passenger side or left right however you want to look at it now we're ready to start putting everything back into the carrier starting with the axle gears we're going to apply a, a small amount of grease to the back of these to help hold the uh, thrush washers in place with the thrush washers on the back the axle gears drop them into the carrier and slip them into the spots where they go. Like so. With a little bit of grease applied to the teeth on the first cam gear, we can drop that into place. And note there are two flat spots on this gear that will not fit in the carrier unless you rotate it so the flat spots align. Let's try to get those teeth to mesh. Hopefully that'll stay put. And we're gonna repeat on this side. With the cam gears installed, we'll rotate the whole assembly around so you can see this pocket for the springs. And these are just two small springs that go in there and they help keep everything 
spread apart. Some nice little grooves machined into this locker so you can get a tool in there. These springs aren't super stiff so I can actually get them in most of the way with my finger and then just push them in with just about anything. And there it is. It's all together. One of the last steps here is to check the center gap with teeth engaged, which they are. And this will ensure that everything's within tolerance that it will work. So we're just gonna measure the spacing uh, at any point here. Check right here, should be between 1.4 and 1.75. Check a good reading here. We were at 1.475 thereabouts, so we were within tolerance. So at this point, everything looks good, and I'm ready to reinstall my cross pin. And uh, remember to install the roll pin or bolt, depending on your differential, to lock all that in place. Once we do that, I'm ready to put all this back in the vehicle. But like I mentioned earlier, if your differential cross pin clears the ring gear and you didn't have to disassemble any of this, it'll go a lot faster for you. After all the components of the locker were installed, I then reinstalled the cross pin, bolted the ring gear back to the carrier, and reinstalled the carrier in the differential housing. From there, we put the cover back on, filled it with fluid, and went straight to the Rubicon. The locker really performed well, and I'm going to leave you guys with a few clips showing the locker in action. Pay attention to the front tires and notice how, when it matters most, they are locked in all the time, and that's what counts. This locker has one of the best warranties in the industry, and it's unconditional of tire size. Also, be sure to check the description for a few more technical specs on this locker and to see some other products from Torque Masters as well. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. We really appreciate you watching. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel if you are not already. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. We'll see you in the next video.